Hey, you, I need you to hit that subscribe button. Subscribe. This life for real. real. I know I understand. We on the front line. We know it's one time. Earning them strikes for real. Living my faith and not by sight. My light shine bright for real. I used to be a sinner. Now shine like a light. It's power in this might for real. We live in this life for real. I know I understand. We on the front line. We know it's one time. Earning them strikes for real. Living my faith and not by sight. My light shine bright for real. I used to be a sinner. Now shine like a light. It's power in this might for real. Uh, I'm a warlord like Joe Ab with a King James. Turning pages to my toes tag. Heathers broken like Kit Kats. Scoffers watch like six packs. On the marriage, can't hit that. Prove a friend, greater impact. I made a gold, I'm bending steel. My iron is sharp, my flesh is killed. Every knee got a bend and kneel. When death destroyed, all is fulfilled. Live righteous or die tried. I tell the truth of my tribe line. Broke the news, my eye was blinded. Now I'm marked, I'm signed crying. Made a gold, I'm bending steel. My iron is sharp, my flesh is killed. Every knee got a bend and kneel. When death destroyed, all is fulfilled. Live righteous or die trying. I tell the truth of my tribe line. Broke the noon, my eye was blinded. Now I'm marked, I'm signed. We live in this life for real. I know I know still. We on the front line, we know it's war time. Earning them strikes for real. Living my faith and not by sight. My light shine bright for real. I used to be a sinner, now shine like a light. It's power in this might for real. Come on, sis. Come on, sis. Come on, bro. Come on, sis. What's your name, sis? Don't be shy. What's your name, sis? Come on, sis. You ain't shy no other day of the week. What's your name, sis? What's your name? Tamika. My name is yourself, sis. Do you believe in the Bible, Tamika? Okay, all praise, sis. What we teach is that according to the Bible, we are the Israelites. You ever heard that? But according to the Bible, we teach that the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, these people on this sound, right? We teach that according to the Bible that they are the biblical Israelites of the Bible because we can prove that through various curses and, and documents that we are the people of the book, right? So where do you find yourself on the sciences? Tamika, right? Yeah. All right. Okay, all praises, American blacks, right? Did you know that Christ was would identify with that if he was alive today? Give Revelations 1. Matter of fact, give me uh, sprang out of Judah first, Hebrews first. We're going to show you that Christ came out of that tribe then we're going to get the description of Christ and show you that he looks like me and you. So if he was alive today, they would call Christ a so-called Negro or African-American. So when we go to church and see this, we should question that immediately and ask the pastor, why does Jesus look like this in here when the Bible says he looked like me and right. probably you? Right? Read what you got. Hebrews chapter 7 verse 14. For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah. Who is our Lord, sis? Jesus, that's our Lord, right? It's evident that Christ sprang out of Judah, the so-called American blacks. Now, get Revelations 1. Yes, We're going to build, sis, because what I need you to do uh, before you leave here today is uh, I need to instill a sense of self-worth in my sister and in my people. Because do we value each other, sis? Do we value ourselves? No. Okay. We don't value ourselves. It's relevant to our community. Look at where we live, sis. We throw trash on the ground, we hang out all day, we do drugs, we haul our sisters out, we dog our dudes out, we don't raise our children together. We don't value ourselves. And that's because we don't see Christ and God in each other. We see it in white people. White people can walk through here and be safe. I can't walk through here and be safe, sis. You can't walk through here and be safe. But our own people live around here. How am I, how am I more safe in another person's neighborhood than I am in my own, with my own people? It's because we don't see this in each other. Get Christ. Watch what Christ looks like. Remember, he sprang out of Judah, right? Start at verse 1. Revelations, chapter 1, verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ. The revealing of Jesus Christ. Verse 14. Verse 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool. Right, so look at this depiction right here, right? His head and his hairs were white like wool. Like a fully gray man, like your and my grandfather would look like, right? Read. 
as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace. So Christ was a very dark-skinned man with woolly textured hair, sis. Do we, do I, I, I'm gonna ask you as a sister, do our sisters value their hair texture? Some do and some don't. Some do and some don't. Do you value your hair texture, sis? No, not really. Not really. Why not, sis? Who taught you to hate yourself, sis? No, I just don't take that. Someone taught you to hate yourself, sis. Because you said you don't value your hair texture. Christ has your hair texture, sis. Right. Who, who, told, who told you that that wasn't beautiful? I'll give you a hint. He did. Right. He taught you that you weren't beautiful, sis. He taught you to hate yourself. That's why you that's why you said I don't like my hair texture. Christ has your hair texture. You are made in the image of the, the creator of all earth. Right. He looked like you and you look like him. You are a daughter. You are the only sister on the planet of your people, not of your people. Your sister, you, people like you are the only ones that can say they are in fact daughters of God. That's right. You are, sis. So when you say something like, I don't I don't like my hair texture, that hurts, sis. That hurts me to my my core. Because my sister doesn't think she's good enough. My sister don't think she's beautiful enough because she's allowed white people to tell her she's not she's not good enough. Right. That's what happened. You you were taught to hate yourself by your oppressor, sis. That's right. That's why. But that's okay. We're gonna get something there. Give me give me a uh, Proverbs. You know. Oh, you got it already. My brother in the spirit, man. Read what you got. Proverbs chapter three, verse thirty-one. Three. Envy thou not the oppressor, uh -huh. and choose none of his ways. Sis, if you got woolly hair like Christ. And the oppressor says, dye your hair blonde and make it straight like mine. Don't do that thing, sis. That's your oppressor. White women are your oppressor. We came over here in slavery, and guess what? That white woman was okay with it because she had slaves cleaning up her house and making her kids food and nursing her babies. That's your oppressor, sis. I know they, they, they didn't put it out there. They didn't put the Kardashians out there. And what's some other, uh, what's that, that white woman they said is the most beautiful woman in the world? Prince Diana. I don't, I don't damn know. You know what I'm saying? This, 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 spoiler alert, there's no woman on the planet that looks better than the so-called black, Hispanic, right. and Native American woman. That's right. There's no man on the planet that looks better than the so-called black, Hispanic, and Native American That's or right. the Israelite man, woman, and child. And you got to know that, sis. It's Black History Month, and we ain't learning nothing about our history. Nothing. My sister on, in Black History Month just walked up to me and said she doesn't value her own appearance, even though the God of the Bible. And let's get God. Let's get God, uh, Daniel 9, I mean Daniel 7. Let's see what God looks like. We saw what Christ looked like, right? Let's see what God looks like, sis. So when you walk away from here, I want to never hear you. I want to see you next time wearing a big old afro, you know what I'm saying, or a big old puff ball in your head. And wearing that thing proudly, sis. Right. Proudly, sis. Never let somebody tell you ever again that you ain't worth anything. Because God says the opposite. Read what you got. Daniel 7 and 9. Daniel 7 chapter and verse 9. We're going to get what the most high God. We're going to get what God's, I mean Christ's father looks like. And you tell me if this is there's value in this. Read. The book of Daniel chapter 7 verse 9. I beheld till the thrones were cast down. You listen to this. This is what we talk. We're talking about God himself. Not Jesus Christ. Not the son. We're talking about God the creator. Read. And the ancient of days did sit, uh -huh. whose garment was white as snow, Reed. and the hair of his head, uh oh, and the hair of God's hair, read, like the pure wool. Look at that brother's hair right there. God got hair like this, sis. God got hair like you, sis. Look at this right. brother here. God got a God himself has hair like that. Jeez. So if, if, if it's good enough for God to have woolly hair, it's good enough for my sister Tamika to have. You understand, sis? All praises. Now watch this, sis. Give me uh, Timothy. Now I'm, I'm going to ask you a couple of questions, sis, because the Bible says that the Israelites went into slavery for breaking God's laws. One of those things is, uh, well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get something. Because are you, are you married, sis? You're not married. Okay, I'm a married man, sis. Right? I'm a married man. And I value my sister and I love my sister. So this is love, sis. You understand? i read what you got. The book of 1 Timothy, chapter 2, verse 9. In like manner also, that women adorn themselves in modest apparel. Right, you got kids, sis? You got children, right? A daughter, son? Both. Okay, you got a daughter. I'm going to deal with the daughter, right? The Bible says that our sisters should adorn themselves, meaning dress themselves in modest apparel. Would, do you, would you say that you're modest, sis? What does it mean to be modest? It means to be covered up. It means that another man that is not your husband shouldn't see your figure, sis. That's what that means. So I'm a married man, right? 
Should I see your figure, sis? I shouldn't. That means you're dressed immodestly. But the Bible says the righteous Israelite sister that looks like God, that looks like Christ, should cover herself up and be modest. And not only that, but teach her daughter to be modest. Right? You have children. Is the father in their life? He's in their life. Okay, good. Why didn't he marry my sister, man? I don't know. Right. But, I mean, I, I feel you on that, but he should have married my sister. My sister could have held him accountable to marry you. But one of the reasons is we dressed in modesty. He, before he even wanted to get to know you, sis, he already know what your body look like. That's what that is. We, we don't hold our brothers accountable. We, we put ourselves out there to get niggas. Not men, because men take care of business. Right. I'm not saying that the brother doesn't take care of his kids. He may take care of his kids, but the best thing he could have did for his kids was marry the mother of their children. That's right. To marry the mother of these children. First, first before he had some children with her, and be honorable. The Bible says marriage is honorable. But one thing my sister can do to help make these men honorable is cover up. Right. Make sure you let these men deal with what's up here first and not what's down here. Because if you give it to them, they'll take it. Believe me, sis, they'll take it if you give it to them. You know that though, right? <laughs> Read. With shamefacedness. The Bible says that a woman should adorn herself in modest apparel with shamefacedness. I mean, not all up in men's face, laughing and kiki and cackling and stuff, but almost shy. Right, like a princess. You see, uh, what's what's that damn lady name? Uh, Meghan Markle. Do you see her always up in a bunch of men's face? No, no, you don't see that. What about the Queen of England? You see her up in a bunch of men's face? You see, you see her up in a bunch of men's face? You see the Queen of England walking out. <laughs> All right, I got you. I'll take I'll take that. You don't know, sis, right? But the Bible says that a sister should be modest, meaning covered up, and shamefaced, meaning shy. Read. And sobriety, uh -huh. not with braided hair or gold or pearls or costly array, Read. but which becometh women professing godliness uh -huh. with good works. Read. Let the woman. Okay, let that's it. That's all. So the good works is covering yourself up. That's one. One thing is covering your head when the scriptures come out. That's a righteous work. Did you know that was in the Bible? Let's get that real quick. We going so we going. I want you to to when you walk away from here, sis. I want to instill in you some value of yourself because you are valuable to if to no one else to God, right? You need to you need to know that you know. But in order to prove that you're valuable, there's a certain way that a princess of God has to conduct herself. Right. One way is cover herself up. That's not for nobody to see but your husband. Are you still with the father of the kids? Okay. Is there prospects of y'all getting back together? Okay. Unfortunately, right. Hey, we learn. We live and we learn, right? You can do better now, right? So, Lord willing, the next man that comes along marries you. The best thing for you, sis, is to... Did she get a fly? You got a fly? The best thing you could do, sis, for your children, you said a son and a daughter, right? Is to call that number on the back and get linked up with us so that we can teach our sister how to become a, a princess of God according to the Bible. Right. And so that she can raise her sons and daughters up to be the same. And so that Lord willing, we can get our sister a husband, a righteous man. That's right. A good man that's going to take care of those children and her. That's right. right? I'm going to show you why why we, we have uh, brothers and sisters with, with kids all over the place. Right? Give me that in Sirach. Oh, was that? No, nah, we're going to drop that. Give me Sirach. Give me Sirach, right? Because we, we, we lay up with a bunch of... Let me, let me say it like this, sis. Um, did you grow up with that man? Did you grow up with that man? How'd you meet him, if you don't mind me asking? I'm sorry? Do a family member. Do a family member. Okay, so so uh, somebody played matchmaker. That's, that's cool. That's fine. So, so somebody played matchmaker. But you didn't know this man before. You might, you got with him, right? So you didn't know what his mental mind was like, right? He might have been cute. He might have been fine or whatever the hell. He might have some muscles and stuff, right? You like what you saw, obviously, right? <laughs> but you didn't know him. You didn't know him, right? Give me, give me a... Uh, uh, so I, uh, six and uh, seven first, and then we're gonna go to 37 and, and 12. Watch this, sis. It's important that you know these things. That's why I say you gotta get with us, learn about your heritage, and then hopefully these things will come. Because before you ever give a man uh, yourself, you know, you gotta prove that man. Read what you got. Sirach, chapter six, verse seven. If thou wouldest get a friend, Prove him first. Prove that person. You know how you prove a person? Get to know that person. Have those real in-depth conversations. How you doing, man? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You a beautiful sister. Okay, all praises. That's good. Um, do you want to get married? Oh, no, I ain't in marriage. All right, then. Shalom. Walk the hell off. Clearly, he ain't about with, with some business. Oh, you like taking care of kids? Uh, hell nah, man. You got kids? Yeah. 
You take care of them? Hell nah. Oh yeah. Shalom. Have a nice day. You gotta ask them hard questions. You gotta ask them. You gotta prove these people, Re. Right? And be not hasty to credit don't, him. Don't be hasty to credit nobody, man or woman. Because everybody put on the front. A man that woke up in the club flashing a whole bunch of money, but that don't mean that he got money like that. He might have just went to the, to the ATM machine and pulled his whole paycheck out. Right. Now he up in the club making you think he balling and got stacks to the ceiling. But he broke as hell, sis. He broke as hell. You got to prove people like that. Because everybody put on this. Have you not put on a show before, sis? Be honest with me. I, I, I have. I've put on a show for people before. Made somebody believe some. Right, job, right, job interview. You walk up in a job interview, you put on your white girl voice. You know, you right. sit up properly and everything. Right, you put on a show because you want you want the outcome to be what it is, right? So is it safe to say that niggas will walk up on the sister and put on a show? Yeah, I'm an entrepreneur, Negro. You know, I got this money stacked to the ceiling. It says, yeah, you see my kicks, I'm all about the money. And this nigga broke as hell. You gotta prove these people. Says, read it again. Sirach chapter six, verse seven. Read. If thou wouldest get a friend, Prove him first, uh -huh. and be not hasty to credit him. For some man is a friend for his own occasion. Some man is just your friend because he just want what's between your legs, sis. Some man is just your friend because you got a nice crib and he ain't got nowhere to live, so he needs somewhere to post up. You know, he needs somewhere to post up. You know, get him some food, get him some... Out, out. It's cold out here, sis. I, I need a place to live, so... Hey, I'll be your friend if you gonna let me post up. Right. Or, you know, you got a nice car, shit, I ain't got no car I'm riding this bike, but, you know, she got, she got dough, and if she ain't got dough, her friends got dough, and if her friends ain't got dough, they friends got dough. That's, he, read that last part again. For some man is a friend for his own occasion. Some men are, or women for that matter, because this ain't exclusively just about the men. Some women are friends for their own occasion. They just want to use you, sis. You got to learn to discern, and you only do that by proving these people, asking them them serious questions. Watch their body language when they ask the question. Look at their eyes when they're talking to you. See how they're moving. Sirach 37 and 12. Watch this. Now, what type of man is my sister supposed to be with? What type of man would my sister had been with, you know, that would be with her raising these children? After 11 years, that, 11 years, that man should have married you already, sis. That's a shame he didn't marry my sister. But nonetheless, we're going to get you right, sis. Read. Sirach, chapter 37, verse 12. Read. But be continually with a godly man. The Bible says be continually with a godly man. A godly man don't hang out on the street. A godly man don't deal with a sister sexually before he marries her. A godly man will not even deal with a sister before talking to that sister's father. Right. Because he wants to know... Uh, I, I have daughters. I need to know what man is about to be dealing with my daughter. Because I'm going to deal with him differently than my, my daughter going to deal with. He cute. He got some money. I like what I see. I'm going to deal with, do you have a car? Do you have a job? How much money do you make? If y'all would have a child, are you gonna, how are you going to be able to take care of this child and her? Are you planning for his future? Are you planning to grow? What if your wife and y'all have a disagreement about this? I'm gonna ask the hard questions to make sure his mind is right. I don't give a damn about him physically and sexually. That ain't my problem. I don't care about that. I care about is he gonna raise my daughter and I'm gonna do right by my daughter like I would do right by my daughter. Cause he's taking my place in her eyes. That's right. He's taking my place. And he's gonna become a father. So an honorable man, a godly man does these things, read. Right? But be continually with a godly man whom thou knowest to keep the commandments of the Lord. Guess what? One of those commandments is do not lay with the woman before you marry her. Right. One of those commandments is deal with that, that woman's father before you deal with that sister. That's what that's sister don't have her father. Huh? Then, then some did she has did she have a mother? Yeah, I got a mother. Then deal with deal with her. Deal with somebody that can give account of this woman. Teach. Yeah, I understand. A lot of us don't have... I didn't have my father growing up. But guess what? Hey, you got an adult over you, right? Deal with the adult. So that somebody can say... Cause, cause, do you think your mother at least has your best interests at heart? I'm talking about when you were a child, right? She had your best interests at heart, right? Yeah. The average mother, right? The average mother would have her, her child's best interests at heart, right? So do you think if you was to bring a man home and she smelled the inkling of a nigga on him, you think she going to tell you? She gonna tell you, even if you can't see it. If you like, ma, he cute and he got this. Your mom gonna look at him and be like, yeah, nah, that nigga broke. 
that's a baby, that's a nigga. You don't want that. He gonna knock you up, he gonna leave you with some babies. No, he not like that. Yes, baby girl, he's like that. I know you lusting, he cute and all, he like that. And you gonna find out after the fact if you don't listen to me. That's why parents are so important. That's why listening to your parents is so important. That's why being with a godly man is so important. Because a godly man, 10 times out of 10, had godly parents, a godly father that taught him to be that way. Right. And my sister needs to be with that type of man. Why? Read. Whose mind is according to thy mind. Whose mind is according to your mind. Do you want to, do you, do you enjoy, I mean, do you uh, believe that there's honor in taking care of your children? Right? You don't want your children starving and out here with no food and clothes, right? So should he. Did you want to be married? Do you want to be married? So should he. Do you believe in God? So should he. That's what that's saying. Read it again. Whose mind is according to thy mind. That godly man got to have the same type of mind. You have to have the same mind as him. Y'all have to be equally yoked together. Right. If he believe he can sleep around with your friends and you believe that he should only be dealing with you, y'all can't be together. Y'all can't be together at all, Read. Really? And will sorrow with thee if thou shalt miscarry. And whenever you're going through something, he going to go through it. Whenever you're going through something, he going to go through it. Whenever he going through something, you going to go through it. Not, oh, you know, she tripping, man. I'm out now because I can't deal yeah, I can't deal with it no more. She tripping too much. That's what we see. But guess what, sis? You got to hold yourself accountable first. You got to hold yourself accountable in order to hold him accountable. Right. And then once y'all, you can hold yourself accountable. Now we can hold our kids accountable. You want your daughter, you want your daughter to be married? You want her to find a good man? So guess who her example got to be? You got to be her example, That's sis. Right. You got to be her example. You got to be the example to your daughter that you want her to be. Otherwise, you're going to teach her a negative example. And this is for all of us. I got to be the example I want my son to be. Or I'm going to teach my son to be an evil example. And I can't get mad at him. Give me that in Ezekiel and this is the last one. Right, last one, sis. I'm going to leave you with this. Read. Ezekiel chapter 16 verse 44 Behold everyone that useth proverbs shall use this proverb against thee saying as is the mother so is her daughter That can go good or bad sis That can be good or bad However you conduct yourself that's how your daughter's going to conduct Cause she look up to you as she should As she should She want to be just like her mama So if her mama putting on a long modest dress like a princess, guess what? My daughter only has worn dresses all of her life. You know what the first thing she do when she get a new dress? She walk out of her room, dad, look at my dress. She do a little twirl and she excited to show me this new dress that her mama got for her. Why? Because her mama only wear dresses. They princesses in her and I have to look like a princess. I have to seek my father's approval. In order to understand how I'm gonna be approved of a man and love a man, I have to love my father first. That's right. I gotta get my daddy's approval first. And my daddy loved me in these dresses. So I ain't looking for no man that don't love me in a dress. That's what that is, sis. One more time, then we're gonna get ready to go. Behold, everyone that useth proverbs shall use this proverb against thee, uh -huh. saying, as is the mother, uh -huh. so is her daughter. Right. Since you gotta cover yourself up and be modest. So you can teach your daughter to be modest. Or it's only a matter of time, I hate to break it to you, she gonna grow up. And it's only a matter of time that if she, if this is her example, is she gonna go out there and a nigga is gonna get a hold of her and do the same thing to her. And you don't want that for her, right? All praises, sis. Call that number on the back, sis. Call that number, get in contact with us, and Lord willing, we wanna see you, sis. All right? To, to, to Misha, right? To, Tamika, Tamika. All right, nice to meet you, Miss Tamika. All right, shalom. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.